Hello, debaters. Welcome to the 2022-2023 debate season with Bottle. We gladly welcome you. Um, so what we're going to do today um, is conduct a demonstration debate for our beginning and emerging debaters. We welcome you to the season. And luckily this year, we're going to have opportunities to do some debates over Zoom, but we'll have also some opportunities to do some debates in person. So Sophie is with us from out of town. And then we have myself, Gabe, and Najara in person. Um, before we get started with the debate, I want to introduce you to some of our volunteers who are helping us with um, getting this debate um, conducted. And they'll tell you about who they are, why they enjoy debate when they started a debate, and um, just talking about who they are. So um, I'll start with Sophie, and then we can go to Gabe and then Najara. Uh, thanks, Mathino. Um, yeah, I'm Sophie Martinez. Uh, I started debate in high school in Maryland, um, and I joined because my friends were doing it, um, and then kind of really got into it and continued into college at, at Towson University. Um, and I'll, I'll say debate opened up a lot of doors for me. I got a scholarship for college to do debate, um, got many different kind of job opportunities while I was in college and a little bit post-college, um, and it just kind of opened me up to a lot of new literature, new things that I really wasn't even getting in my coursework. Um, so kind of opened my mind up to a lot of different things and, and continues to do so. So I appreciate that. And definitely uh, a great network of people um, to get connected with, so. All right, I guess I'll, oh, oh, oh. all right, there we go. Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Gabe. I uh, went to Skyline High School in Oakland. Um, so that's how I got introduced with debate, how I got introduced with Bottle. Um, uh, yeah, and similar to Sophie, um, it just gave me like a lot of opportunities, um, job opportunities, um, opportunities for learning, expanding my mind. Um, and yeah, and that's why I continue to do it. Technology is hard. Um, my name is Najara. As you can see, I'm a little bit of Megan. Got to stay ambiguous. Um, I debated for four years in high school, then debate in college. Um, I personally really like debate because I feel like you always learn something new. Um, it never gets stale because you always have to one up each other. Um, and you definitely meet some amazing people. I've met people that are still in my personal life, personally. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I met cool people. Okay, I'm gonna just echo what everyone else has said. Um, I joined debate because I had a smart mouth and I wanted to know how to like use it. And I, my high school debate team had a long history of um, debaters um, who were people of color who did exceptionally well within the debate space on the national level. And that interested me and um, before I, I only had an even record in the UDL space. So by the time I got to the national circuit, I had like a 50, 50, 50, 50 record. I had the same amount of wins and the same amount of losses. And then I had my first opportunity to break and I kept breaking. Um, and so that gave me that, that I guess that, um, I don't know, I became a fiend for debate. Uh, I, I became a fiend for winning and, um, I, through that ability of being in this space of being able to have a lot of mentors and people guide me and coach me through this journey of debate, I've met a lot of awesome people. And I've gotten a lot of opportunities, like Sophie said, um, in, in debate and outside of debate, I've gotten opportunities. And so that's always been cool. I've actually was um, on the Towson debate team with Sophie. Um, so I debated in college and we were debate partners in college together. And I've been able to um, do additional work outside of Towson and continue to coach and help other organizations, which led me to helping the Bay Area Urban Debate League as a program director for the Open Division. And that's what I do now. So yeah, debate can land you into a lot of cool opportunities and cool spaces. This is my, actually tomorrow, no, today marks my, the day that I signed my lease. So today is, so I just, I just noticed that. So it's been one year officially today that I've been in the Bay Area. So yeah, so cool things can happen. So just to um, let you know, so now that you know who everyone is, 
I want to let you know what each person will be doing today. So Sophie will start the debate. Um, Sophie and Najara are on teams together. So because Sophie's starting the debate, she will be the first affirmative constructive. And then um, Najara will be the second affirmative constructive. And then on the negative side, you have myself and Gabe. I myself will be the first negative constructive and then Gabe will be the second negative constructive. So those are the four debaters that we'll have in this debate today. And so, yeah, I don't think that there's nothing else that needs to be said. Um, just before we get started for the students, I want to make sure that you take out two pens um, and you can use whatever colors you like. Me, I'm using blue and red. Um, and I also want you to take out some flow paper. And so here you can see we provide flow paper. In the description of this video, you will find um, a template for flow paper that you can use on paper or if you want to flow on your computer. Um, and so um, some of us can demonstrate how to flow on paper. And Gabe, is it okay that you demonstrate how we flow online? Mm -hmm. Okay, on the Excel sheet? Great. And so um, Gabe will do that for us. So flowing is basically a way that we record and take notes in the debate of what's going on. So uh, we do that with the sheet. Again, you can find that sheet in the description of the video. And lastly, um, of course, at the end of each debate round, there needs to be a decision made on who wins the debate. And so also within the description of this video um, down below, you will find a, a sample ballot in which you can try to determine and write out um, your thesis for who you think won this debate today. And so, but that's all you need to know um, just really quickly before we get started, make sure that you pay attention to the columns so that you can pay attention to um, where you're supposed to be writing down those arguments within each column of the flow sheet. All right, now that we got all this that out of the way, um, this will be the long version of a demo debate. So we won't use the five, three, two times. We will use the eight, five, three times. So that means eight minutes for the constructives, three minutes for the cross sex, and five minutes for your rebuttals. And so we wanna show you how we do it normally. And so, yeah. Um, Hopefully you all are ready who are watching and we're gonna get started with Sophie as the 1AC. All right, thanks everyone. Um, yep, are we ready? Yeah, yes, all right. Uh, inherency, one, the United States needs to increase cyber efforts with NATO to improve NATO's and their own cybersecurity, as 16. Developments in the cybersecurity operations of both NATO and the EU have paralleled the growth of cybersecurity as a major policy concern to the US and other national governments. European countries have responded to the need to increase coordination and cooperation through new initiatives at the national level and under the auspices of NATO and the EU. The efforts of NATO and the EU to mainstream cybersecurity into existing activities has thus far proven insufficient to fully address this growing cyber threat landscape. Cyber attacks are becoming more frequent, more organized, and more costly. They can reach a threshold that threatens the national and Euro-Atlantic prosperity, security, and stability. NATO itself has been targeted directly by Russian hackers seeking information on its defensive posture against Russia. Furthermore, the recent attack by Russia on the Ukrainian power grid underscores the fact that Russian cybersecurity capabilities are very real. NATO also faces the same types of cyber breaches that affect businesses in America on a daily basis, ranging from random criminal acts to infiltrate NATO systems to those of a more sophisticated targeted nature. Two, cybersecurity attacks are becoming more and more dangerous. Migrate 22. Malicious cyber activity has increased substantially over the past years, ranging from ransomware and espionage to politically motivated cyber attacks and sophisticated malware used in the Ukraine war. Many aspects remain uncertain, but given the unpredictability of the Putin regime, the risk of an escalation in hostile cyber exchanges between Russia and NATO states remains high. NATO is set to issue strategic documents in 2022 that will guide the next decade of its military planning. This will certainly require more transatlantic consultation on political military matters with an emphasis on cybersecurity and cyber defense. Malicious cyber activity has increased substantially over the past years while the world has kept turning amid the omnipresent pandemic. And criminal groups compete and are increasingly weaponizing sensitive information and infiltrating other countries' networks to steal data, seed misinformation, or disrupt critical infrastructure. Harms. One, the past attacks on U.S. cyber space will continue to happen without strong cybersecurity. Purdy 21. The colonial pipeline ransomware attack illustrated the vulnerability of America's critical infrastructure to a security breach. Fuel shortages and rising prices got people's attention. Data breaches have more than doubled over the past decade. Recent cyber attacks have raised concerns at the highest levels of government and private sector. The stakes are only getting higher as the Internet of Things makes everything more connected and we all become more dependent on 5G enabled technologies. What's being dumped to prevent cyber attacks and is it enough? Two, U.S. cybersecurity is currently weak against attacks. Mark Schaefer, 22. Our network of cyber experts has the less than rosy take on the U.S.'s ability to fend off 
about cyber attacks, a half decade during which government and industry have supercharged their efforts to defend against devastating hacks from foreign government and criminals, but the bad guys have upped their game even more. I see no evidence that the threat has stood still, and in fact, it is likely it has grown at a faster rate than our defenses. About 43% of respondents of the U.S. is more vulnerable to cyber attacks now. Cyber security is improving constantly, but the complexity of our digital society may be outpacing our efforts to keep up. Many experts blame the U.S.'s ongoing vulnerability to hacking on the increased brazenness of U.S. adversaries, especially Russia. Russia's use of cyber tools against Ukraine has clearly demonstrated to the world that it can fully disrupt key aspects of critical infrastructure. Thus, the plan. The United States federal government should substantially increase its security cooperation with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in Cybersecurity. Solvency. One, the United States should join forces with NATO to increase their own cybersecurity threat they promised to. NATO 22. NATO adopted an enhanced policy and action plan, which were endorsed by allies at the 2014 NATO summit in Wales. The 2014 policy that cyber defense is a part of the alliance's core task of collective defense confirmed that international applies law applies in cyberspace, set out, for, set out the further development of NATO's and allies' capabilities and intensified NATO's cooperation with the industry. At the Warsaw Summit, allies also pledged to strengthen and enhance the cyber defenses of the national networks and infrastructure as a ma matter of priority. NATO helps allies to enhance their national cyber defenses by facilitating the information sharing exchange of best practices and by conducting cyber defense exercises to develop national expertise. Two, NATO's cybersecurity is considerably stronger than the U.S., Dolan 22. In Madrid, NATO will update its strategic concept, the principal document that guides the alliance's political military strategy and collective defense operations. If NATO is to become more resilient against advanced persistent threats, hackers, and the malign states that sponsor them in 2022, Strategic concept must infuse multinational warfighting and deterrence against hybrid threats with methods that facilitate access to data and information sharing on its platforms and across multiple domains. The strategic concept is among NATO's most important documents as it informs alliance planning, resource allocation, and programming based on changes to the threat in the environment. The strategic concept 2022 we should focus less on the emergence of new technologies and more on NATO's military and civilian personnel use them. NATO must reach out to the experts in the private sector, academia, and non-governmental organizations to harness ways to expand access and emphasize flexibility in multi-domain operations. NATO can do this by providing more grants to private sector partners and establish a new center of excellence on data and information sharing. NATO members should develop smarter and more lethal capabilities to confront threats from state and non-state actors. This would allow ACT and ACO to prepare for any contingency and respond to adversaries in battlefields and battle spaces. Advantages, COVID-19. One, coronavirus impacts are made worse by weak cybersecurity efforts, Migrate 22. The coronavirus pandemic further complicated the cyber threat landscape in March 2020. Attempts to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus led to social distancing measures, travel restrictions, and remote work in a short span of time. IT security professionals had to respond to the challenges of working from home. Even if hardware and software solutions were in place to secure the organization's data, they were often no established policies to help employees wade through the jungle of threats and vulnerabilities they face when moving their workplace out of the traditional office environment. The top five most targeted industries in 2020 were business and professional services, retail and hospitality, finance, healthcare, and tech technology. Highly organized, technically proficient criminal syndicates compromised the most significant cyber threats to allies. In 2021, prominent ransomware attacks struck Colonial Pipeline, the operator of the largest fuel pipeline on the east coast of the U.S., JBS, the largest meat processing company in the North America, and the co-op, a major supermarket chain in Sweden. Healthcare was also targeted in of the same year, the entire health service system of Ireland was disrupted over weeks and over the spring and summer, dozens of hospitals in Europe and the U.S. were locked out of life critical systems by ransomware attacks. And the entire U.S. economy is at risk. Foundation for Defense of Democracies 21. The digital age has increased productivity and efficiency, but many firms are struggling to manage the downside risks that accompany it. Too many companies are prioritizing short-term growth and cost-cutting at the expense of cybersecurity. One company's cyber risk can cascading economic and national security implications. Poor cybersecurity is today's systematic risk, and the potential impact is even greater. Unlike the accounting malpractice and financial scandals of the 90s and early 2000s, the prompted congressional interventions, a single company with efficient cybersecurity could inflict substantial harm on the U.S. government, company shareholders, including retirees, dependent on pensions, the public, and critical national infrastructure. And to Russia, one, a strong national security front is it helps secure U.S. from further Russian attacks, Migrate 22. In December 2020, Russian intelligence services infiltrated the digital systems run by U.S. tech firm SolarWinds and inserted malware into its codes. During the company's next software update, the virus was inadvertently spread out to about 18,000 clients, including large corporations and U.S. government agencies. The hack went undetected for months before the victims discovered vast amounts of their data had been stolen. In September 2020, the internal system of Norway's parliament was hacked. Norwegian authorities later identified Russia as the actor responsible for the attack on the day of the Russian invasion. Viasat, a provider of high-speed satellite broadband services, was hacked along with one of its satellites whose users included Ukraine's armed forces, police, and intelligence service. And Russian attacks could go nuclear, CNBC 22. 
Putin has had a history of escalating unpredictability if he feels that Russia is being humiliated in some way and if there are major setbacks. Then there's a risk of unbreakable action. Threatening nuclear attacks is part of Putin's playbook. Putin enjoys using risks and he thinks he has much more of an appetite for risk than the West does. Let's stop there. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'll be briefly going over um, sort of what happened in that debate um, so that we can uh, all sort of keep on the same page and then we'll move into cross X. All right. So um, first off, we started with the inherency, one of the really important parts of debate, one of the stock issues, as we call them, um, talking about why the uh, what we're talking about is important um, right now. Uh, um, in the status quo, right? So we're right. Talking so we're talking about, about how the U.S. needs to um, increase its uh, cybersecurity efforts with NATO, with NATO so that both NATO and, and the United States um, will have stronger cybersecurity. Um, um, the reason being because cybersecurity attacks are becoming more dangerous with time. Um, we went into some explanations as to exactly how bad it could be. Um, we had a uh, Purdy 21 was the first card here, here saying, saying that um, past attacks on the U.S. US um, will continue to happen without uh, uh, like stronger security. security. And, then and then we had, we had uh, it was Marks and Schaefer, I think, 22, um, saying that, uh, saying that uh, U.S. cybersecurity is currently weak against, against these kinds of attacks. Right. right? So, so things, things are getting worse, worse especially. Um, um, uh, with you know things being so much more digital these days, um, uh, post-COVID. And uh, that's only going to get worse. And so we need to strengthen ourselves there. Um, we had the plan text, of course, that's very, very important. Don't forget to do that. Um, saying that the United States federal government should um, cooperate with NATO on cybersecurity. Let's see. Then we went into the solvency. Another very, very important stock issue, right? Saying why we should, like how we are actually able to fix the problem. They're able to fix the problem, theoretically, allegedly. Um, saying uh, first that the United States should... Um, join forces with NATO, um, probably because they promised to do that, right? Um, you can't really back out on your promises, at least you shouldn't. Um, and one of the big reasons we should cooperate is because NATO has stronger cybersecurity than the U.S., so we can cooperate and make all of our cybersecurity stronger. We have two advantages coming out of the affirmative. The first one, um, the coronavirus impact, sort of what I was hinting at earlier, um, a lot more places are working digitally now. People are working from home. A lot more things rely on the digital space, right? And a lot of hackers are taking advantage of that by hacking systems and making money off of it through various means. And uh, we need to strengthen ourselves against that. And it could pose a risk to the economy at large. And the second advantage that we were talking about was Russia. Um, keeping a strong security front against Russia and any sort of threats on that front. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, all right. Bam. So, what, Gabe, do you mind doing us a favor? I did allow you to do a screen share. Could you just show the folks um, what does a flow look like real quick? Sure, yeah. So, this is my online flow. Let's see here. Uh, here we go. So, I use this program, which you can download for free online. It's called Flexel. It's like it's like an Excel for um, flowing, right? Um, it's made up of all these different tabs. Actually, put inherency and solvency in the same place and harms. Uh, but this is sort of just like my basic beginner stuff. Um, uh, you can either type some of the stuff out. Some of them I honestly just kind of uh, copied the tags and put them in here because I didn't want to. Uh, some of these like beefier tags, I wanted to get it exactly what it says. Um, but uh, yeah, this is one way to do it online. I separate out with this little pipe here, right, right here. I separate out where the author is, right? So I have like the actual description of the card here. And then I have the uh, author here. I don't have that for all of them, uh, to be fair. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of zooming. I don't have the time for that. Um, and we, uh, we can split up between advantages. And then we have way more than we need here. This is just like the base template, right? Um, you don't always need all of these. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing that can be a little bit tougher with doing stuff online as opposed to just writing with a pen is that you don't get to, you know, you can't draw like little symbols that only you understand, right? You can't really do sort of that kind of stuff. Um, so you kind of got to think of ways to um, 
to keep things nice and quick and short um, while also uh, you know making them able to be understood. Um, this program, I think actually does have like a bunch of, um, see if I can find them here, but they do have like a bunch of like shorthands, right? Like if I, for example, you see here, if I type VIO, um, it automatically fills a violation because that's a word we use quite often in debate. Um, I think same if I do DEF, do definitions, yeah. Right, so that kind of stuff. So they have lots of these shorthands that you can use that will fill stuff out for you. Um, yeah, anything else you wanted me to demonstrate here? No, I think that's that's great. Cool. Okay, so um, now that we have completed the 1AC, just remember that um, as you look at your flow sheet, as um, Gabe has shown to you all, um, in that flow sheet, just make sure that you write all of your arguments if you are on paper. Everything right now should be documented in this column where it says 1AC, all right? So now we're moving on to cross-examination where there's a sequence of questions and answers, and um, that's between um, Gabe and Sophie. All right, kicking it off. Let's see here, let me get my timer going. Whoa, what? That one has to be one. Yeah, thank you. All right. <clears throat> All right, so my first question is on your COVID-19 advantage, this uh, my, my gray 22. So you're talking about how coronavirus impacts are made worse by cybersecurity efforts. Um, exactly like I mean, the card describes like all these different problems that happened because of COVID. How is this like really any different than what was happening before? Right, because ha like hackers hacking things and getting money for it is like not a new concept. Like why is this like something that matters at all any more than it did before i mean it matters more because right so much more of the world is online now with covid right people went home for work uh so now things that maybe were on your personal computer are now you know and uh, are on your work computer um are now on your personal computer potentially or on your home wi-fi or maybe you're in starbucks connecting to an open wi-fi and people can you know obviously makes it much easier for folks to hack I mean, it just really opens the world up to a lot of different um, vulnerabilities that weren't in existence before when people were just meeting in person or doing things on paper or, you know, even on their office networks. All right. And so you'll have to explain to me, please, exactly how this leads into putting the entire U.S. economy at risk, right? Because it seems like quite a jump of like these places being targeted for like some money to like the entire economy like being at risk. Can you please explain that? I mean, it, right, like these places are really big places that have already been affected, right? We've got like the largest meat processing company in the US, uh, you know, the largest fuel pipeline operator, right? M major healthcare systems, the, the entire healthcare system of Ireland, like these are really big impacts that are already happening. So I, I don't think it's really that much of a jump at all to think that that could impact the whole, you know, US economy. Okay, well then I guess my next question is, so all these big, huge places, right? A pipeline, the biggest meatpacking industry in the US, the entire healthcare system of, the, of Ireland were hacked and their economies did not get put at risk, at least to a significant degree. How is this going to like, like what needs to happen in order for the US economy to actually fully be at this risk that you're talking about? If all these huge places have already been hacked and it wasn't that bad. I mean, I, I think a lot of people have been going through a lot of things during COVID, right? So I, I wouldn't say things haven't been that bad. They probably have been really pretty bad. Um, but right, obviously they could get even worse. Um, and so increasing that, you know, as time goes on and as hackers get more advanced, especially if the US doesn't really focus on addressing these issues, um, things could get really bad, right? Especially if we start getting at folks' pensions and retirement, social security, those types of things. I guess I have a question because you say that, um... We can just keep it on your volume. You just say that, um, you know, that there's all these issues, but what does your ass do to actually resolve these issues? Like, what do you do? I guess that's what my partner is asking. What do you do to resolve it? Um, well, I'll, I'll take some prep time to for them to answer this question, if that's fine. All right, I'm starting our prep now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we partner with NATO, who we've no, we read cards who are already more advanced than us in doing this work to actually, you know, build up our cybersecurity efforts so that we're can compete with the hackers that are, are already attacking us. 
Does it say anywhere specifically that uh, that NATO uh, capabilities and cybersecurity have to do with preventing hackers who are targeting these systems, or maybe more in like a military sense? Because that's what a lot of your stuff is talking about, like Russia. I mean, I think Russia is attacking people's syst like systems, right? Like, you know, uh, just because it's, you know, Russia and they're more on a military level doesn't mean they can't attack healthcare systems, those sorts of things. So I think that they're one and the same. Okay, thank you. Um, that was uh, 43 seconds of prep used. All right, mute myself, hang on. All right, you all, that was basically cross cross examination, um, which is where we do question and um, question and answering. Um, typically, um, when you're in cross sex, you're you want to lead with leading questions, um, which means you don't want to ask questions you don't already know the answers to. Typically, um, cross sex is used for a time of clarification, but you want to try to stay away from those clar clarification questions as much as possible. Try to use as much deduction reasoning skills and context clues um, while you listen to the speech and also whether you're in person and a person has paper, you know, you can grab that paper as soon as a person is finished reading that paper and, you know, analyze those those texts or that evidence while a person is still speaking. Also, too, if there is a um, document thread, you can be able to, you know, as the person is reading, go through the thread of, uh, go through the document as a person is reading it on online. And you should ask for that evidence before the person starts speaking. All right. So now we're gonna get into the one and C, which is the first native constructive, which is myself. And um, let me upload the new document because I took out one card, it's just one card from earlier. So. All right, I just want to make sure y'all have it. I think it's the demo. Is it called demo? It's called demo. All right, I just sent it. And then let me open it. All right, so my order will be on to, on, well, I don't need to give the orders. Basically, I'll just give a roadmap of on case and to off case. So everyone who's a novice, you wanna have, you wanna go back to the flow that you already started with, and then you wanna get two new sheets of paper and then flow um, these two off case positions on two other sheets of, two other separate sheets of paper. Let me, let me scroll over just a little. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. So if you can hear me. Yeah. I can hear you. First, onto on case. The affirmative first card, Ives and Edel in 16, suggests that NATO has continued to work on cyber defense efforts since 2007. We've already been working on cyber de defense efforts. There is nothing that has been able to spark a, uh, uh, any type of nuclear war that the affirmative has tried to articulate. No criminal warfare now or then has escalated to the event of nuclear war. There's nothing unique about what the plan, what the affirmative plan does to avoid nuclear war. Number two, there is no systemic risks. The government and private sector has already been resolving the status quo in terms of um, cyber breaches, and there's nothing that has been able to 
to escalate that has been able to predicate nuclear war. Third, the U.S. has already increased in efforts in cooperation with NATO on cybersecurity. This is Boulder 2018. The U.S. is prepared to use cybersecurity along with other military weapons against the enemies when needed, including to counter malicious cyber activities targeting the country. The Pentagon will work to strengthen the capacity of allies and partners. NATO has moved cautiously on efforts of cyber cap capabilities, but the focus has already been on defending NATO networks and those of its members uh, and not offensive cyber warfare. On to their um, Russia advantage. One, fully non-unique, U.S. is currently helping Ukraine in more than one way in terms of munitions, in terms of troops, and et cetera. Russia has already been threatened via sanctions regarding Ukraine. The affirmative plan is not unique to resolve the more than 72 years of U.S.-Russian hostility. Russia and the United States have been fighting for a long time. There's nothing that the uh, the affirmative plan is going to do right now to solve that 72 years of aggression that has been gone on. This one plan cannot resolve the long history of warfare. Um, we need a uh, comprehensive approach to, uh, to actually change, and the plan is not that. Number two, a strong defense system will not regulate criminals. Um, um, Criminals will work even harder to find the ability to breach sensitive uh, information. Um, U.S. and U.S. allies and private uh, governmental databases are still going to be at risk. Um, these types of um, scenarios that involve cyber um, um, security hackings is very ubiquitous. There's nothing that the app does uniquely to solve that ubiquitous nature of of, of cyber attacks. Um, cyber attacks are really acts. Uh, cyber attacks are not really acts of war. Consider them as such. Undermines NATO's efforts to deal with the legitimate acts of violence. Violence is blessing in 425. Cyber attacks are rarely acts of war and threatening them as if they are. Undermines NATO's ability to deal with them as real threats short of cyber wars. Cyber attacks are uniquely um, to uh, are uniquely to destroy buildings. Um, cyber attacks are unlikely, excuse me, are unlikely to destroy buildings and kill thousands in an instant. While collective defense extends to cyberspace, few operations could realistically be a cause of for war. Unlike missile attacks or tanks in the streets, few red lines exist to distinguish cyber crime, cyber espionage, and cyber disruption from digital acts of war. Cyber attacks would not warrant an, um, an Article 5 response. NATO must build cyber resilience rather than preparing for cyber doomsday. This is Blessing 425. The Russians have already deployed several digital tools to destroy computer data, resulting in corrupted computers for Ukrainian companies with government support roles. Each of these scenarios are much are much more likely than the dooms uh, cyber doomsday scenario that can justify Article 5 response response from NATO. Con concentrating only on acts of war comes at an expense of addressing it, the cumulative cost of low-level cyber threats over time. It leads to an over-resilience on cyber de deterrence of de and defensive whack-a-mole strategies, neither of which are sustainable. Policy across Policymakers across NATO must acknowledge that the security failures are the norm in cyberspace. Now let's go to their COVID advantage. First of all, data breaches cost companies millions, and for that, they have already expanded cybersecurity because of that, and those efforts include those who work from home. This is Tulane University 2022. As hackers and cyber criminals develop new ways to access sensitive information, even the largest companies in the world must stay vigilant across security vulnerabilities. Information security analysts and cybersecurity specialists are more in demand than ever. Data breaches cost demands. Um, call, well, data breaches cost business an average of $3.62 million, a, a number that can put companies out of business, but of of course, companies not out of business. The dead, the number of data breaches at the end of the um, at the end of the cost to cybercrime worldwide have already rapidly increased. On to the first case, off case, one Russia advantage, disadvantage. The plan continues to push NATO expansion, triggering U.S. security attacks from Russia. This is O'Connor Jamali in 2002. Russia's potential to launch cyber attacks against U.S. in response to a potential escalation. Uh, uh, um, of the crisis unfolding at the border with Ukraine, we assess that Russia would consider initiating a cyber uh, attack against the homeland if it perceived that the U.S. and NATO response to a possible Russian invasion of Ukraine threatened its long-term national security. The memo detailed a range of ways in which Russia may choose to unleash a cyber arsenal in the event that the flare-up, while nothing such of a action would be unprecedented, Russia maintains a range of offensive cyber tools that it could employ against the United States. They're talking about things that have happened in the past, but we don't even know if they have other hacking systems that may be even more destructive than the status quo if we continue to provoke Russia. Russia targets the United States in cyber attacks following sanctions in response to the invasion of Ukraine. This is Sky Guy 2022. President Biden warned that the involvement in intelligence suggests um, Russia is exploring options for a potential uh, cyber attacks targeting U.S. The magnitude of Russia's cybersecurity capacity is fairly consequential. While there's no evidence of any specific cyber attack, threat, hence why their app is not unique. Mr. Biden is a Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technology. U.S. officials have ob observed that 
preparatory work has already been in place linked to the national the link linked to nation states actors such activity could indicate increased levels of scanning web, uh, websites and hunting for vulnerabilities among u.s companies and the impact for that is that nato intervention on ukraine will escalate probability of ne nuclear nuclear retali retaliation for russia suggested by former statements made by putin this is official 2002 as russian nations escalate their standoff over ukraine um nuclear strategists and former u.s officials warned that there is a growing risk of nuclear exchange leaders on both sides emphasize that they could consider such a war for unthinkable which means no one's thinking about nuclear warfare right now even as they are making preparations and issue declarations of how they might carry it out but the fear experts stress it is not deliberate escalation to war but a misunderstanding and the provocation gone too far that as each side scrambles to respond spirals out of control nato forces intended as def um, as defensive uh, are ma massing near russian borders that with much of russian military bogged down in ukraine are unusually vulnerable. Russia has said that it considers that the weapons and increased military and that Western governments are sending to Ukraine a tournament to war and has implied that it might um, strike NATO convoy uh, over the weekend. Russian missiles um, struck a Ukraine base nearly miles from the Polish territory onto the China descent. Um, NATO's learning from its mistakes with Russia shifting resources to focus on China in the newest strategy. This is March 2021. NATO's new uh, strategic concept seeks to learn from failures to counter Russia's influence. Um, the new framework uh, must address an emerging threat posed by China. We need to take into account the challenges uh, that China poses to our uh, alliances, considering how the alliances fail to fend off Russian aggression. China is watching to see how or if our allies will take a firmer stance. Meanwhile, China has used its economic power to better position itself militaristically. The, now the link. The pacing gap between uh, but prevents um, tech innovation like the AF and, ma and maintenance of international relations at the same time. NATO diplomacy could be thrown off balance by weighing the tech regulations. This is hard 2018. The technological tension between the need to innovate, the desire to maintain order and disability will always exist. If the allies are not carefully uh, domestic, contentious and international disputes over trade and technology regulations could consume their political energy, breaking the promise of translation renewal before it has begun on, on to impact. Um, China expansion creates World War III, World Point II, um, a Cold War II and proxy wars. This is very and while China's rise, um, the U.S. and its allies fear losing equilibrium that supports American domination of the global order. China has raised concern about Beijing's unchecked attempt to change the status quo to pursue military expansion and follow a path towards uh, hegemony. Uh, the uh, will war between the U.S. and China result on um, the current tension. World War Three, Cold War 2.0 in the regional parts of the world, and World War Three will be the most extreme. I didn't read um, the internal link cards. Thought it would be faster. I'm sorry. I tried to. I'm speaking drills earlier. <laughs> I just want to be clear. I know, I want to be clear. All right, I'm ready. I could keep speaking. Oh, yeah, we doing I can mute mine if you want me to. Just let us know if we're echoing, Sophie. All right, you're good right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't oh, hear Sophie it. Can hear. Oh, yeah. we, we also cannot hear you, Sophie, because all of our computers oh. are Oh, are we going straight <laughs> to the cross? No, no, we're muted. We, 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 uh, oh, okay. Uh, the, the feedback. Why don't you unmute yours? Yeah. Okay. Okay, can you guys hear me? Sorry, I'm getting through it. Do you think that cyber attacks are unimportant? I've never said anything about them being important. I just don't think they're that no, sure. If they are, they hold on, let me answer the question. If they yeah, are, no, if no, they, no. if they are important, your app is not un unique enough to resolve it, though. But the question isn't whether you think our app is unique or not. Yeah, cybersecurity is important. Okay, perfect. Um, so let me get into the what's the link to the China Um, the link to the China to one second. Um Sorry. So the link to the China just said it reads that basically that there is um, that basically you're just creating a trade off. Basically, we're already trying to invoke diplomacy, NATO diplomacy. But if we're like on this tirade of like securitization, like, hey, we need to be secure with cyber war. And it's really not that bad of an issue. We're only going to provoke Russia to and not even it's not even really about Russia anymore. It's like China is now also one of our aggressors, too. And so like we're like not able to um, deal with China as an aggressor for like focusing on, on Russia. 
Okay, um, can you give me, like, an example of that right now, how we're focusing too much on Russia? So we're well, not- your evidence and my evidence has already suggested that we're involved with Ukraine. Okay. Um, and, you know, our involvement with Ukraine is kind of like what is causing um, R- Russian aggression, because, of course, right now, Russia and Ukraine are fighting. Yeah, I think our evidence is saying different stuff than how... So- what are, I don't know what different stuff is saying. No, I'm asking, what are you specifically saying about um, how we're revolving around Ukraine right now? I didn't say we're revolved around Ukraine. I said that is something that your app doesn't really consider, that there's sanctions and stuff as it relates to Ukraine. You're talking about that, like, oh, we need to have cyber defense. But the truth of the matter is that there's already other issues that are going on in terms okay. of Russian aggression. Um, Can you give me said that well there's several warrants in on our evidence well if you want to go back to your COVID advantage you talk about like we need to have like security within the home but the, the private sectors is already resolving that not only just private sectors are already resolving it but government sectors is already resolving issues as it relates to cybersecurity. like my partner said like this is not a new issue and it's not a new instance of like we're just getting to this ability to resol- resolve issues as it relates to cybersecurity. it's a long haul of resolution and your one your aff is claims to be this like unique thing that resolves like this long history of cybersecurity, and it's not okay sure but that didn't answer my question what were the exact warrants from the card that say that we're increasing cybersecurity? what what sanctions are from, from this particular card it's, it's, it, it, if we look in the well, if we look in the uh, unhighlighted part of the card, it says in 2016, they made some official uh, like legislative um, change that recognizes the cyberspace as an important war fighting domain. Which your app doesn't do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you want to take your prep? No, we need to get right now. <laughs> okay. Sorry, you might want to get like closer to the mic a little bit. I could hear you oh, during the cross X, but it's a little. You want me to just send all the cards? Yeah. Hold on. Let me mute myself. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. No echoes, right? Not too bad. Uh, a little bit when Gabe unmuted himself, just because it's like three. But Najari, you might want to get a little closer to the mic. You can hear you, but it's a little low. Could you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you.
Are you able to, to hear me? Now I can hear you. You guys are getting here. Okay, perfect. Um, um, case, Russia, China. The advantage will be um, mixed in with case at the end. Because I don't believe in using different flows. Sorry, could you speak up a little more? Or maybe the use Mathino's computer? Sophie, were you saying something? Oh, yeah, it, it sounds a lot clearer on your computer. I don't know if you should use your computer instead, maybe. Or if she can scoot closer to that computer. It's probably my Chromebook abilities. Okay. Do you want to um, just fix it? Oh, yeah. Just use the Chromebook. I have to fix it. Okay, should I just speak closer to you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll speak them just like this. Okay, how do I sound? Perfect, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just sit it right here. Oh, that seems very stable. There we go. You, you still not. hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting nervous already. I'm not gonna lie to you. I might take one of them um, bottles of the phone just if something happens. <laughs> okay. It's not gonna reflect the MacBook. What? That's a Mac. It's not a MacBook. It's a Mac. Mm -hmm. You're like, Molly, I have to be a ring and burn, so I'm going to take home one of the computers. No, she's already with the phone. We're supposed to be here now. I actually inspected the setting. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody ready? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Overview, the U.S. cyber security is on a downward spiral, leaving us open to cyber attacks from Russia. Our own election was hacked in 2020, which is supposed to be one of the greatest systems in the country. While we while we were in COVID, our whole lives became dependent on the internet, which leaves more of our information vulnerable to cyber attacks. Our impact is nuclear war. People will continue to die if we view cyber attacks as unimportant, which means you need to do the 1AC. Um, on to, on to line, by, line by line, because there's no such things as extinction in the app file. Um... Their first card, their Baldwin 18 card, um, first of all, that's not true. Um, there's their whole card in the warrant says it would trigger the defense from NATO. However, before our um Lyra 16 card, the problem will continue without strong without stronger actual defense and concrete solutions. Um, and the 2020 election proves their card is from two their card is from 2018. The 2020 election proves that there was no actual increase to prevent these cyber attacks. And if there was, it wasn't good enough to, to prevent the cyber attacks in the future. Um, two, onto their blessing, onto their blessings card. Um, you can extend their last card, the Bolden 18 card. Um, they're saying that cyber attacks aren't warrant for war, but their own card in the Bolden 18 says that um NATO recognizes cyber attacks as um um NATO recognizes cyber attacks in article um. Five, which means that if one of with one member of NATO is attacked, then the other members of NATO can come to their defense and um and help increase their cybersecurity. Um and uh, um NATO does view this as dangerous. And then two people die from cyber attacks all the time. Um, when you when a cyber attack happens on a hospital, that means people are um, prevented from getting life-saving technology. And that means people who are on like um, um, life support, as soon as that goes out, that means those people die. We have to view cyber attacks as important. Even if you think that it's quote unquote, even if you think it's just one life, that one life matters because that means it could have been prevented if we simply increased our cybersecurity. Um, they said there are ready to spending, um, but two, you can use the Boulder 18 ev evidence here. And then uh, two, and then one, the only the card only focuses on companies. That should, um, the, the card only focuses on companies saying that they should do something, but has no warrant that they have done something. Um, and two, card flows app, it says that in the, it says that in it says that in the next year, cybersecurity, um, the card flows app on the uh, on the advantage. It says that um, 
in the next year, cyber cyber attacks will cost companies double. That that um that linked back to our um economy failing argument, meaning that if the economy meaning that that money that 20 that 20 billion that's going to come out of that company that's going to cause our economy to fall that's what they were asking about in cross sex their own car flows affirmative onto the onto russia Russia will not increase aggression toward, uh, what Russia will not increase um aggression when the app is passed as door 22 we should expect to see increase in the russia cyber security attacks against the united states and other countries providing support to ukraine as the crisis as the crisis draws on increasing in the in the private sector which we know uh, which we notice that there is a time for russia expansions as as, uh, as decrease in the attacks of cyber security professionals generally um, added to these instructor sectors to sponsored and state affiliated hacking organizations and particularly regarding um, Rossware. Um, whether whether this is related to the Russian state sponsors and state affiliated attackers focusing on their efforts in the war in Ukraine or if it has or if it has some other type of um, distribution in, the, in their operation perhaps is the efforts by the U.S. government to address um, Russian rival gangs and two, Russia will not attack because they're uh, will not attack because current threats from the U uh, current threats from the U.S. That's George twenty two. How serious are the potential threats to um to critical infrared to the United States from hostile um cyber operations? Most recently on on March 15, twenty twenty two, the constellation of application in the art and act will um require will require um entities determined by the critical infrastructure to report um report substantial cyber attacks within a, within 72 hours and uh Rossware payments within 20 24 hours of the um CSI perhaps more importantly in June of 2021 after the colonial pipeline of Rossware attacks uh, president Biden warned uh, warned Putin that 16 um 16 critical insular um sectors should be off limits from cyber attacks the uh, presidential notice um clearly rises in the stakes for uh, Rises the stakes for Russia. Putin must um, certainly expect such attacks will have a significant response from the um, United States. Cut the card at United States. Um, two, turn a large scale cyber attack is the only way America would engage would engage in conflict. That's Wolf Twenty Two. When are cyber attacks on? When is a cyber attack an ever war? If the cyber attack causes significant death, destruction, or or injury, is the same sort that you would see from a um from a more traditional attack using um, character means like bullets or, or missiles, then you, you would call it a, a use of force in international law. A cyber attack targeted, uh, targeted a dam and air and a air um, traffic control towers might be raised in level, but the government should try very hard to avoid responding to cyber attacks in a military attack. It may appear from the U.S. sitting at Italy, but it would it would it would be highly doubtful that that's the case. She said, arguing that defensive actions would be more effective to de-escalating the standoff. It is selling more. Um, example for response and strength behavior it looks like the threat of a uh, military response, cut the card of response on the China DA. NATO was already on the verge of collapse or um with or without the app that is um wash that is Washington Post 2022. Although NATO has done more than it needs in order to maintain the more significant capabilities of defense of the system as a whole, is really not lived within the prospect of a of a military or cyber attack of its territory in a credible way. Um, um Donner said, uh NATO said green gin um Jens Sarah said that January that the cold source security effort had been uh, ex ex exchanging information with the Ukrainian counterparts as, as a uh, current missile cyber cyber activities that um, Ukraine is experiencing in the lead up to Russian invasion per service but the other potential setbacks of NATO is that it has taken steps to acquire offensive cyber capabilities and it depending on the member of the states um, cut the card at states even even NATO even is NATO a stretch cooperating U.S. Um, Co-option within the U.S. stops collapse at number 22. Um, more operational and technical level um, joint activities should be practiced among the allies with like-minded partners to contribute to imposing costs to America's actors in counter space. Even um, given that um, NATO cyber, cyber response team stretched due to protecting NATO's own own net, um, networks, bias and multicultural um, capacities enables countries to share the best practices in an event of an emergency. Uh, providing mutual uh, mutual rapid assistance is 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 um, in crisis response. Cut the Carter response. China is not a real threat. That is. Um, Capital Institute 21, policymakers increasingly view China's rapidly growing wealth as, as a threat. However, even if it continues to arise, China does not permit such a security threat to the United States. China does not harbor um, Hitler-style ambitions of, of um, expensive conquest, and the China government depends on the world economy for development and, and, and the constant uh, uh, criticization of the Chinese of the Chinese people. Armed armed conflict would be extremely even, overwhelmingly costly to the country. Rather than rising anything that could be um convinced of dominant China would be dominant would would decline into um substantial economic derogation. Cut the cart there. Um 
NATO co-option with the U.S. would not would not allow would not would not allow us to as for Jordan and 19. For most of the U.S. allies in Europe and elsewhere, there would simply be there would simply be a dark of technical know-how within the government when it comes to cyber and uh, cyber. Um, our production and operations. This already can, this already challenges the United uh, the United States with a massive de uh, natural defense budget, Silicon Valley um, intervention, and to and an educated a workforce to pull into the government government service. To uh, to its credit, the U the U S natural cyber cyber strategy is not per not propose um, capacity building measurements to support the allies. This needs building building up law enforcement intelligence and, and uh, military operational and investigative um, capabilities. I just didn't read the, the last card. There you go. Do you want your computer and then I can just answer on my yeah. computer? Cheers. Okay, great. All right, you said do the one AC. What is doing the one AC? Like, you want an example of how the no, I just want to know not an example. I don't want to know what your one AC specifically does. Yeah, yeah. Do you want an example of the one AC? No, what? It, this is not an example. What does your F do? Yeah, do you want? No, I don't need an example. I don't want the what. I don't need the after thought. I need the like what does it does, and then you can give me the after thought. I don't know what you mean by that question. It's a very simple question. What I does your I'm, ass? I'm asking you, do you want me to Once you pass the plan, plan, what happens? Yeah, that's, yeah, what, that's what I was about to say. Okay, go ahead. And you told me not to say that. Okay, go ahead. Number one, Number one we believe that the 1AC is a step in the right. Can you, uh, yeah. can you curious? There we go. Number one, we believe the 1AC is a step in the right direction in increasing cybersecurity. And then number two, um, we believe that the 1AC. That's great what you believe. What do you do? That's what I'm, that's what I'm, that's Never what I'm, mind. I'm not gonna get my question answered. Next, next thing. All right. So, um, you do nothing. So, what is so since you do? Um, cross check does not check that I do nothing. It just means you interrupt me in the middle of the question. Okay, sure. Question. So, you talk about these electrical grids and that hospitals want to have electricity. Yeah. When in your evidence do you say that you solve for like hospitals not having power? We don't, we don't say specifically that we solve for hospitals not. Having right, because you don't power. explain what you do. We're saying, we're saying that, that there are cyber attacks. There are cyber attacks that happen. Okay, another question. That shut off I'm, 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 and I have another question now. Security to stop that. I have another question now. So, what does your app do to stop people from hacking? What do you mean? What do you mean? Just you you say attacks, attacks are happening by cyber attacks. What does your app do to stop attacks from happening? Okay, number one, we believe that there's a difference from just regular hacking and then there's inter international level hacking. Great. How do you stop it? Also, what is it? First of, all, First of all, regular hacking can mean anything, like base level hacking, like I hack into a Discord server. Um, international level hacking is Russia hacking into the US security system. We believe that we should put more focus and into those systems, meaning that we should support NATO in creating different strategies. And then two, um, we believe that your Boulder's 18 evidence also says that since it triggers the Article 5 in defense of each other in cybersecurity, we believe that we can use that, number one. Um, and and since we don't have, we don't have strong enough cybersecurity, someone, someone from NATO can come and help us and increase our cybersecurity. Oh, so, someone from NATO can help us, but you just said NATO was on the verge of collapse. That's I, something I never that. said NATO was on the verge of collapse. We cyber said cyber um, cyber um, our cybersecurity is, is bad in an adaptable environment. Which is which is, a, which is a which is being a proponent of NATO, right? Like you're advocating for a cybersecurity uh, initiative. That doesn't necessarily mean that NATO is on the verge of collapse. You actually did say those exact words. You did say those exact words. Which card are you? Which card are you referring to? Are, I am currently referring to uh, Migern, uh No, um, uh, Washington Post, twenty twenty two, in the answer to the China DA. NATO is already on the verge of collapse with or without the app. And this is and it's recorded, so it'll be there. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Do you want to take crap time to answer that question? I mean, it's up to you. Uh, no, I'm all good. Let me take. Let me just take crap. Uh, before we do all of that, um, I just want to take a moment. To just because uh, we never did the debriefs on the other speeches, uh, so really quickly, a few things that were displayed that you probably shouldn't do. You probably should do. First one is just be careful on what you do in cross six. Let a person answer their question. Sometimes try to keep it copacetic. You want you don't want it to be too hostile. The other thing too, um, 
you know, ask your questions, but you know, if you if you have a moment where you're like, hey, I'm probably not listening to the person answer their questions, go ahead and make those adjustments in the in, in the debate. Um, the other thing is I just we're just showing you all kinds of things that can happen within the debate round. The other thing is too, I want to go back to the um did we do a review of the one and see? So let's do a review of the one and see. So the the argument from the one and see was is that like Basically, there's already initiatives right now happening to resolve what's going on as it relates to cybersecurity. And then the next argument um, that was on their Russia advantage, and then their Russia advantage was basically um, saying, you know, you know what it says, but our argument was that basically that, hold on, let me make sure I have it right. Basically that, um, let me stop saying basically. Oh, that um, that there is no threat uh, as it relates to cyber security aggra aggravations leading to any nuclear war. Then there was oh, before that they had a COVID advantage, and we were arguing that basically companies are uh, and private sectors are already resolved now. And then, so that was kind of some of the arguments. And then we had an off case position that basically said that China, well, the first one was Russia, basically saying that Russia, we're only provoking Russia, making Russia more mad. And then the other argument um, was from the China just said, which is on another sheet of paper, basically says that the plan will trigger a Russian attack because we're having all our focus on. Um, Russia and not China, and that there is a lot of advancements when it comes to tech as it relates to China, and that basically there will be a trade off also, I think is what the arguments is making, being able to deal with both China and Russia, and that um, that this um, intervention, that NATO's intervention would kind of you know allow them to be spread too thin and cause nuclear war because they're not able to resolve the first. Um, conflict and then it, you know not being able to resolve the first conflict was far into other conflicts um and so that's basically the one and see um and then we had the cross sex where you know we had some questions and answers then we had the jars 2ac and then in the jars 2ac do you want to go over your 2ac no. Okay. I don't know. Um, and the 2AC, um, so basically Najara had an overview and typically in an overview, you're just telling the judge, you're just highlighting to the judge, like, you know, um, what the debate is going to come down to. And so Najara is like, this is important. Doing our affirmative plan and working with NATO is important. And uh, then she um, continued to extend um, the argument saying that, look, all right, cool. You know, that the argument is a matter of can we do more to resolve the status quo and 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 not a matter of like what we're doing now being enough um you know um she put some impacts to talk that um it kind of turns some of the arguments of, um that we had about electrical goods um she made some arguments about how some of our cars do not um correlate with some of their arguments because our arguments talk about the private sector not talking about the international databases and talk about companies um and then um, she also talks about how our car talks about um, how this has cost companies money and that how that will be bad. Um, and so she, there were some responses there. So yeah, there's also some responses about China. I didn't have the cards. Maybe I should put the cards. Let's see. Did you send the two AC? Najara? Okay. It's cool. Um, we, can do, we can do another review of the 2AC, but that's some of the gist of the 2AC. Um, we'll do another breakdown, um, maybe post the block, but um, uh, hopefully you've been able to keep up with what's going on thus far. Did you want to add anything to the 2AC, Sophie? Did you want to add anything? No, I think that's good. Okay, cool. So now um, Gabe is taking prep. I should have been timing it. <laughs> Uh, no, I wasn't. Um, I didn't know you were prepping. Let's just say he took two minutes. Is that cool? Do you want to keep going? Okay, he's going to keep going with prep. And um, you, sh you all, if there's anything within this debate that you have questions about, anything that you misunderstood, um, if there's questions about why are we speaking a little faster than normal, please understand that people speak even faster than this and that we've kind of tamed ourselves a little bit for you all not, who are in offices, but we do want to show you the what you intend to do in the future, which is hopefully we want you to be word efficient and to be fast and for you to have as many arguments 
on that sheet of paper as possible um, so that you can have uh, 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 not so you can have depth of arguments but also breadth of arguments as well. And so that is the point of us kind of speaking a little faster than normal. And so if you have any questions about anything, any of the words you've heard, like link turn, um, overview, any of those words that you have not gotten a definition to within this particular video, please write it down. You can reach out to me, you can reach out to Maya or any of our other alums who work with our program throughout the season. Najara is one of those folks who works with us. So um, if you need to reach out to me, if you need to reach out and jar, or you can re reach out to the network of coaches that we have with Bottle if you need some assistance with any of that. And if your coaches don't know, um, then your coaches can definitely ask me and we can get those answers to you. Um, but that's all I have about um, anything that you may have heard this far. We're going to allow Gabe to prep in silence. I'm not gonna lie, I'm just reading on the cards that I read finally, just figuring out how to tie them together. Oh, is that me still on the mic? Ooh, hold. All right, can we hear me? And am I echoing? All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, um, can I see the timer actually? Thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I'm with that. All right, so um, my order is going to be uh, Russia disad, China disad, and then case in the order of um, COVID and Russia. All right. You said Russia, China case. Um. Uh. Yep. Russia, China case. Order of the one AC. All right. A him. All right. So quick overview on Russia. So any increase in NATO presence in either the physical or the digital world will be perceived by Russia as a threat. They operate off of what's called a zero sum game, meaning that any benefits to someone that they are enemies with means a loss for them. Right. There's no sharing. Um, and they will not abide these kinds of things, right? The idea that I want to get across is not only that the AF cannot solve for these things, but they actually anger Russia and increase the risk of nuclear war. All right, first extend our Fisher 22 card that NATO intervention in Ukraine will escalate the probability of nuclear war from Russia. And here comes some new evidence. Um, NATO is not an effective force against Russian cyber attacks given the limitations within Article 5. All right, this is from Lonergan and Moeller 22. One way Biden and other Western, le Western leaders are attempting to deter potential Russian cyber retaliation during the UK and crisis this through NATO's Article 5 Collective Defense Pledge, then attack on one is attack against everyone. After Russia invaded Ukraine, NATO Secretary um, Jen Stol Stoltenberg confirmed that NATO policy on collective defense and cyberspace uh, holds strong, noting that NATO has, quote unquote, decided to make a, it clear that cyber attacks can trigger Article 5. But despite this rhetoric, exactly how and when of Article 5 applies to cyberspace remains unclear. This ambiguity is a huge problem with potentially disastrous consequences, staking the credibility of Article 5 on what are murky activities in the cyberspace threatens to undermine the broader principle of collective defense. We cannot risk fracturing this whole transatlantic alliance at a critical juncture in its history over debate on what constitutes a major or a minor cyber attack. The AF has talked about this, right, of like, oh, cyber attacks trigger Article 5. We all collectively defend each other. We, they haven't even started what that means inside of the cyberspace. Are we all going to like gang up on someone in cyberspace? Like, how does it even work? What does that look like? 
All right, no explanation of this whatsoever. Moving on to China. So let me first um, read the uh, internal link card that my partner um, didn't have the time for. Um, this is the second HAR18 card. So HAR18, um, continuing to have a wide and shallow focus will provide fatal as the rising power of China coerce to break NATO, all right? A focused approach to renewing the strategic concept would serve NATO better than a broadened agenda. Russian and China are the two strategic actors that have the capacity to break NATO by strategies of coercion. NATO allies have offered these competitors ample opportunity to adapt to Western military strengths and political weaknesses. Were NATO to label these countries' threats and challenges, which it has, um, and then wander off in these different directions, it would embolden these competitors to further erode NATO's own resolve and reputation. All right. I'm hoping, I'm a little afraid that the China DA isn't fully fleshed out as to for um, all of y'all to understand really what's going on. But essentially, we are spreading ourselves too thin, right? We've got our focus on the wrong thing, and that's letting China creep up and like gain more power, right? China is going to take advantage of this opening to attack, proven the, by the slow increase that we're already seeing in cyber attacks. They are testing the waters right now to see if we're basically weak enough for them to go all in on us, all right? So this is a card, Conklin and 22. Cyber attacks against NATO countries origin, originating from Chinese IP addresses have increased 116% since Russia invaded Ukraine. Earlier this year, 116%. Cyber attacks from Chinese IPs have also risen around the world 72% this year. All right. Uh, and also, yeah, extend the fact that... Uh, yeah, so, uh, and that is the overall impact of this uh, disadvantage as well, is this increasing risk of China hitting us real hard and fast in a way that we're not expecting um, in cyberspace, all right? So now moving on to case. First off, COVID. So this advantage is actually awful. Um, they, we are already working in the status quo to change things. That is our Tulane 22 card. Businesses have already realized so this is a huge problem, and they're working on fixing and securing the cyberspace from hackers. Next, there has been absolutely no explanation as to how this leads to things being bad enough that the economy collapses. We tried to elucidate this in CrossSec by saying, well, we've already, these huge places have been hacked, right? Like medical institutions, energy sources, um, uh, food sources, all these things have been hacked. And uh, yeah, I'm not to discredit the fact that there have been um, uh, negative impacts from that, but the economy collapsing is something pretty big that you can't just say is going to happen. Um, and there's been no bright lines to exactly how like how we're going to get there, right? Um, the neg the affirmative tries to do this in the two AC when they're saying, oh, um, uh, trying to reference some of our evidence and saying that it flows affirmative, um, that uh we lost like twenty billion dollars and that amount could double, um, in the in the next coming years. But even still, this fails to uh, present the exact line where this is going to happen, right? Because even if we give them the fact that yeah, we're going to not just lose twenty but double that forty billion dollars from hackers, where's the explanation that a loss of $40 billion is going to cause the economy to collapse? Yes, $40 billion is a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of the US economy, it's actually a fairly small number, all right? And that's not just like from the government itself, it's from different companies, so that impact is actually dispersed throughout these multiple companies. Like some companies are taking this much of that $40 billion hit, others are taking some amount of that $40 billion hit. It's not like the US government is entirely taking that $40 billion hit. So there's no explanation as to how, um, a loss of $40 billion is going to trigger this economic uh, collapse impact. In fact, there's really no explanation as to what that even happens when the economy collapses, even if we do somehow make that leap of faith for them that, yeah, maybe the economy is going to collapse. What's that going to cause? There's been no explanation for this, all right? So do not give them the warrant for this COVID advantage. All right, next, Russia. So, uh, Y'all, I'm actually a software engineer here, so let me drop a little bit of just like expertise on this topic here. So Russia and talking about hacking, all right? It's the very nature of hacking that you that hackers take advantage of vulnerabilities that you're not prepared for, right? You can lock the front, you could put in you know, like 20 million locks on the front door, but if you've got a back door that's unlocked, they're just gonna walk into the back door, all right? That's the nature of hacking, right? You can prepare for all these ways that hackers have hacked you before, but there's nothing preparing you for the ways that hackers will hack you in the future, all right? That's the entire nature of hacking, that you cannot ever possibly be prepared for all the different creative ways that hackers are gonna hack you in cyberspace, all right? And so they're trying to secure themselves against something that is literally impossible to secure yourself against, all right? And there's no explanation as to how they're going to be able to um, account for this kind of thing. And the reason is because they cannot do that, all right? They try to make this distinction between like international level hacking and sort of like base level hacking, hacking into a Discord server, but both 
them. It, they have not said in any sort of way how they're going to be able to account for the fact that even if they spend 20 years um, developing ways to prevent hacking, that's going to be based on the ways that they have already been hacked. But hackers are smart. They're clever. The whole point of them hacking is that they figure out ways to get into your vulnerabilities in ways that you have not prepared for. All right. They cannot be prepared for things that they are not prepared for. That's just logic. All right. So do not give them any ability to be able to solve for their plan here because they have not been able to um, explain this at all. All right. Um, let me just go line by line a little bit back on some other stuff that I feel like it didn't cover quite as much. So something that was touched on very slightly in the cross X was this concept of NATO being on the verge of collapse, right? That was basically what they're trying to say on the China, on the answers to the China disadvantage. And their argument for that is that, well, we actually strengthen NATO when we cooperate. All right. But if you read their evidence, um, which we'll be posting, it does not say anywhere how that cooperation is going to affect uh, NATO in a positive way, or that it affects it NATO in any sort of positive way. It just says that they can cooperate. It does not say in any way that they will cooperate. And so we, yeah, we'll agree with the fact that, yeah, NATO is on the verge of collapse and it's not a, a helpful uh, or useful actor. Um, three minutes for cross. Oh. Um, that's, uh, Sophie's going to do it. Yeah. Um, so can you explain to me, um, so for your China disadvantage, you're basically saying how if we focus on cybersecurity, then we're losing focus on China. Can NATO only focus on one thing? Um, no, that's, that's actually not what we're saying. And hey, yes, NATO, NATO can focus on multiple things. But the, the point is, like, and it's not about the theory that they theoretically can do this. The fact is that, that there are tangible policy actions that show that they're not focusing on, on China. Okay, so, but how does focusing on cybersecurity decrease their focus on China if they're not even doing it already? No, see, that, that's the thing. It's, it's not a, a focus on cybersecurity that's causing this detraction from focus on China. It's the focus on uh, our conflicts with Russia, actually, and all these other, like, international threats that are, yes, huge international threats that kind of are problems, but that takes away from our ability to keep track of China and their growing ability in the cyberspace. Okay, so you talk about China's growing ability in cyberspace and their cyber attacks. Wouldn't the app help with that? Um, no, because we're not keeping track of the specific ways that they're getting stronger, right? It was like I was talking about earlier with hacking, right? If we can't be prepared for the ways that they are going to be hitting us in cyberspace, then we're then they're going to be able to hit us, and we're not going to be prepared for it. Even if we are good at cybersecurity, we're not going to be we not not might not necessarily be good at protecting from the ways that China specifically hits us because there are so many ways that someone can be hacked. That's the whole point of okay, hacking, so as yeah, I was talking about. Talk about earlier. how like there's so many ways people can be hacked. There's no way you can predict. It. So should we do nothing? I'm not, I didn't say that at all. But um, I'm saying that your claim that you're able to fix it does not solve what you're saying it solves. Okay, but I don't understand how, because you, you're saying with the argument for China, right, we don't know how China's doing their cybersecurity. Why can't we focus on that? Like, would that, wouldn't that be the solution to figure out how how we're, well, I mean, how if you want to like cyber. change your advocacy to do that, but it's a little late in the debate. I mean, that. our advocacy isn't specific to a certain country. We, we read a Russia well, advantage. We could yeah, have read, we read a Russia advantage. Exactly. <laughs> like, and, and that, China, that, Russia, that Russia oh. advantage also speaks about how that is a major focus right now with not just the U.S., but NATO as, as a whole. Okay, if it's already a major focus with NATO as a whole, what do you do different? You don't have any kind of counter plan to make NATO's focus... Uh, we don't have to have a counter plan. We're saying that you're making things net worse by focusing more on this and by advocating for that. All right, that's fine. Um, and so what incentive does China have to go to war with us? Um, they don't have any incentive, but they do have an incentive the to- The incentive is that they're already progressing when it comes to technology already ahead of us. They're progressing already. And, and just to weaken this multinational- but they don't um, have an incentive to go to war. Well, they, they, it's not it's not war. It's a, a, an attack that weakens NATO. One of like the biggest like transnational co co coalition in the entire world, which they are not a part of, and therefore they are enemies. They, they have the, the opportunity to weaken their largest enemy in the entire world. All right, that's time. Yep. Sophie, you want to do the quick rundown of what you can summarize what has happened since I gave the last summary? 
Sure, I'll, I'll summarize what I got from it. Um, so basically, on, a, on um, the Russia disad, right? Um, or, or yeah, the Russia disadvantage, right? They're arguing here that um, kind of any increase uh, in NATO presence is going to be perceived as this big threat by Russia. So by our plan, kind of working with NATO to increase cybersecurity, we're going to spur Russia to kind of be angry at us. Um, and then kind of really create this war. And without our plan, Russia kind of feels like everything's going fine for them. So they wouldn't have created a war. But once we do the plan, there, there would be a war there. So that's that's their, what they're arguing there. Um, and then on, on China, um, right, they're saying basically kind of we're spreading um, NATO too thin by, by trying to focus here on cybersecurity and kind of by reading this um, advantage focused on Russia, right? Clearly, the cybersecurity focus, according to them, is uh, is focused on Russia's cybersecurity. So when we kind of spread ourselves too thin, we're kind of not really going to look at what China's doing, um, which is where our, our focus really should be to to avoid the potential attacks by Russia by China. Excuse me. Um, and then uh, on on case here, um, they talk about kind of how. Uh, you know, businesses are already solving for, for our COVID-19 advantage. Businesses are already solving kind of this problem against um, cybersecurity threats, how they've been dealing with these issues for a while, especially during COVID and, and they're working uh, against that. So we don't really need the US government to get involved and cause all these other problems. Um, they also kind of talk about how the AF, right, isn't gonna be able to, to do kind of solve for these cybersecurity issues, right? They're just way, hackers are just way too advanced. Um, to kind of make this cooperation with NATO actually create the things that the app says it's going to do. Um, and so, and then, uh, yeah, it's kind of my summary of it. Mathena, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add. Uh, okay. All right, so now we are moving into the webinar. Um, I'm gonna just get right into it. Typically when you, um, this is what we call the negative block. So um, Gabe is my partner, he's the 2NC and right after the 2NC um, is where the 1NR gives the speech. So this is a back-to-back -back speech given by the negative. The affirmative starts the debate and the affirmative team ends the debate. So because of the fact that the affirmative team starts the debate and ends the debate round, um, they get, uh, debate theorists have given the negative team this advantage since the affirmative has an advantage of starting and ending the debate they give us this advantage called the negative block which means we give two back-to-back -back speeches Gabe's eight-minute speech then which is now my five-minute speech so that makes a total of 13 minutes in which um, Sophie will have to respond to and so that's the strategic advantage that the negative side has in this block so five minutes on the clock and I'm just, I don't even know where I'm going. Just slow me down. No, don't forget about me. I can let me do ins and outs real quick. I'm ready. I think it's all these, these shirts need to be thrown away. Are you ready? All right, so here's the problem. The AF says that they do something and that we should do the AF now. But yet again, I don't even know what the AF does. Like, particularly, they say they, they're not able to stop cyber attacks. They say that, that we need to stop cyber attacks, we need to stop cyber attacks. But what is it that the AF does uniquely to stop cyber attacks from happening in the future? They have no argument as to what they do. Is it a program? Are they going to have people in place? Like, what is it that is going to be this cooperation plan that's going to be with the U.S. and NATO? And how are they going to ensure that it's enforced and it's adopted and implemented? They have not been able to explain any normal means process throughout this debate. So you cannot be able to allow them to vote AF in this debate because there's nothing to vote AF on. Now, moving on. Um, they also talk about the fact that, um, that the AF uh, that the, the status quo does not do enough. But again, what is enough? What is enough that needs to be done to make the status quo 
be able to resolve some other unique intrinsic um, 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 inherent issue. Like there's no de definition of, of what isn't enough now that the status quo isn't resolving. As we said before, this issue with Russia and this Russia aggression has been existing since 1949. There's nothing that the uh, uh, 1AC can do to resolve this longstanding aggression. There's nothing unique. This one plan is not going to stop Russia invasion of cyber attacks. Like I've stated before, Russian, I mean, uh, cyber attacks, whether it's Russian or China or Pakistan or whatever any other country wants to do, is ubiquitous, right? As my partner explained, um, there is there, there's so many ways in which hackers can get through, and there's nothing. I'm not a technology person, and yet neither is the app, and they have not been able to explain what type of technology or how there's going to be some implement of technology that's re that's going to resolve any type of hacking. The res the status quo, as I said before, in my bald and evidence already include with other military initiatives, as my bald and evidence says, it's not just a matter of cybersecurity, but other military efforts NATO is currently engaging in to resolve issues as it relates to Russian aggression. Now let's go to, oh, let's go to their their COVID arguments as well. They say that, that, um, that uh, uh, this is talking about companies, but none of their evidence speaks to how, how they actually resolve breaches on NATO, like the only breaches that have existed have only been within the private sector. And if they even do argue that NATO breaches do exist, there's nothing that the app does to resolve it anyway. So like, there's no point of voting app. And also too, let's extend our evidence, our arguments about Article 5. There, there is no international law and international law is important to define measures of what is a cyber warfare and what is cyber attack. That's why no one's taking cyber attacks seriously because there is no international law that defines when we need to act as it relates to Article 5. Article 5 is a policy making decision that's on paper that, uh, that states how NATO needs to orient and how NATO needs to like um, implement itself and act itself within the world. And there's nothing that the act does that makes any of these cyber attacks defined as a war of measure. Let's go into Russia. First of all, they continue to make more Russian provocation inevitable, right? If this is a problem that we've been having with Russia since the 70s, why are we going to continue to provoke Russia? We continue to provoke Russia through the use of the affirmative. First of all, the app doesn't even solve. Right, so the app doesn't solve. So if it doesn't solve, this is like poking the bear. Like really, that's all it is. Because they're not able to resolve any type of cybersecurity hacking that may exist in the future. They say we need to work on something that may exist. Well, one, what is that may exist? What is that potential risk of cyber attack? And how do you resolve it? They don't do this. They talk about some potential electric grid and possible um, hospitals failing, but in the instance in which this has already happened in the past and, and government officials and private sector officials are purchasing and buying more, they, they talk about this evidence doesn't relate, but the evidence specifically talks about how they're putting more people in place in order to resolve issues as it relates to um, being able to um, have people in place to resolve issues as it relates to cybersecurity. Um, that they're, you know, they're, they're beefing up their, um, their front line of folks who are on the front line of cyber security as it relates to NATO and onto China. So it's not, the argument is not a matter of like whether China is as, 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 as if we're spread too thin. The argument is that, but it's also the fact that China is a leading um, um, government sovereignty when it, in terms of technology, and there's nothing that we're going to be able to, to beat them at their own game. So the issue is, is that we need to, instead of trying to make Russia the issue, but we need to make China our focus, because if we continue to focus on Russia and not see our, the advancements that China has, we will continue to risk their, them being able to breach, and also the fact that, um,
All right. You all ready? Yeah. All right, we're gonna go case, then uh, Russia, then China. Um, all right, on case, first, let me be clear here. The app is the only option in this debate. They literally do nothing against cyber attacks or anything else for that matter. The Meg is just basically telling you all the problems that are already happening in the world, but doesn't give you a solution to fix them. So therefore the app is the only thing that at least tries to solve the problems. And in fact, we do solve for these problems. First of all, the, and what the app does, let me restate the plan. The United States federal government should substantially increase its security cooperation with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in cybersecurity. That means that we are working with NATO, which you'll extend our Dolan 22 card, and it explains how NATO already has a cybersecurity plan and we can work with them to, on that plan. We can get more information from that, that plan and make sure that we're learning from NATO about what they're doing. They're already more advanced than us on cybersecurity. And by combining forces, we can join together and actually solve, uh, to actually address some of these issues. So if, again, if there's any chance that we slightly improve cyber attack prevention, you're gonna vote F. Uh, extend our large 16 card on the 2020 election. This proves the big, big impacts that cyber attacks can have, as well as our other cards talking about how the, all of the impacts on health and security. They say, when, where's the economic downturn gonna happen? You've already seen a huge economic downturn with COVID-19. Imagine another great depression. That's what these things look like when, when we actually get to our impacts. Uh, again, extend our impacts on economic collapse. We're already seeing a, a potential war with Russia. We're already seeing how Russia is an unstable actor with Ukraine. Um, this shows how if we don't address the cyber, potential cybersecurity issues with, uh, with Russia, then we could lead to a, a huge economic uh, collapse and as well as a nuclear war since uh, Russia is an unstable actor. Uh, and um, on Russia, they, they're saying uh, on the Russia DA, the, the app doesn't poke the bear. Lots of advantages uh, beyond Russia that we didn't read. We could, the app is not specific to Russia. Russia is just an advantage of doing the app. The app doesn't focus on cybersecurity specifically for Russia. It just focuses on improving cybersecurity generally, meaning that we saw for the cybersecurity talk, they talk about in China and their China disadvantage, as well as the, the cybersecurity issues in Russia without actually triggering any potential issues with Russia um, uh, being worried that we're actually we're doing um, something negative in response to them. Uh, in response to their Blessing 22 card saying cyber attacks are really acts of war, again, extend our Mercury 22 card. Russia has already hacked large systems. As the 2AC said, this is a new type of war that causes deaths, even if you can't see them directly in hospitals and things. And the meddling in political affairs, as Russia did in the 2020 elections, it can create unnecessary wars down the line as well. Uh, also, again, extend our CNBC 22 card. R nuclear war can happen here. Um, threatening nuclear attacks is part of what P Putin does, and you know we already know he's unpredictable. Their own blessing card says we need to take cyber attacks seriously. Just that, just that the more likely scenario are cyber attacks leading to things on supply chains. The app recognizes that, and doing the plan would help to prepare the app for all types of different cyber attacks. Again, their two lane card also talks about how businesses are being hurt by cyber attacks. We need to do something to help businesses and the government. Um, they say that the, the plan triggers U.S. cybersecurity attacks from Russia, but again, extend uh, our O'Connor, uh, but this isn't what their O'Connor and Jamali 22 card says. That card says the U.S. or NATO responding to Russia's invasion of Ukraine would cause that collapse. We don't do that. Again, we're not, the app is not specific to Russia. Russia is just an advantage of doing the app. Um, onto the China disadvantage, the app solves for this. China doing cyber attacks. We can help to solve or um, address cyber attacks. They talk about how you know, you can never prepare for a hacker. You can always prepare be better prepared than nothing. We have to try to uh, address the cyber attacks. If we just sit on our hands, like the negative is what, what, the, what they want us to do, then we will certainly face downfall in economic collapse and nuclear war probably from all these cyber attacks. Uh, as we're already seeing them attacking our hospital systems and more, you're going to prefer our impacts and harms that are already happening related to cyber attacks over their hypothetical ones. Extend our Purdy 21 card. The US is weak against cyber attacks. Also extend our Cato 21 card. This is why you're going to prefer our arguments because China doesn't want a global uh, war. They are they rely on a stable economy to do their work. There's uh, no reason that China would want any kind of big war, as they even said in during cross-ex. Um, 
So you're going to prefer our arguments here as well. In other words, the, the app is the only one op offering you an actual option to, to address some cyber attacks. And that is basically just telling you about what's currently happening, the problems that are already happening, um, but doesn't give you a way to address them. The app, all the app does is work with NATO to improve our cyber our cybersecurity. It doesn't create kind of a specialized uh, invasion on Russia or anything like that that would spark any wars or uh, avoid NATO. Again, extend that NATO is already working on China and already overstretched, but by cooperating with the US, we're able to actually um, solve for, the, for China. We have not enough buttons. Um, it was like five minutes. We're gonna use prep.
All righty. So, let's close this out. What do you think, what do you think Bandito? All right. Bandito's ready to close this out, so let's do this. Um, we are going. Uh, we're actually gonna we're actually gonna hit the case first, and then we're gonna hit um Russia and then China. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> There's Bandito. He's rooting for me, so I can't let him down. All right. <clears throat> Can I see the the timer? All right. A him. All right. So again, uh, order is going to be case, and then the Russia disadvantage and the China disadvantage. All right, I'm literally going to systematically answer each and every argument made by the last speech and explain why we win. So number one, they said that the AF is the only option in this debate, that the NEG does nothing and um, about cyber attacks. Our point, our whole point about all of this is that we are trying to prove that trying to solve for these problems in the way that they're doing is actually making things worse. They're so bad that doing nothing is the safer option. All right. Um, and there's all right. Next to the NATO um, already has a cy strong cybersecurity that, uh, that the 2020 election hacking proves that it's important. We never said that it's not important, that, the, that these things aren't pertinent issues in the world. But the way that you are doing it actually does not solve the problem like you claim it does, which is bad, because if you try and solve for a problem um, and you don't actually fix the problem and we think that it's fine there, a we didn't fix the problem and b there are all these other unforeseen consequences, which I'm going to get into. But next, let's talk about the um, uh, uh, COVID as an example of because I tried to multiple times talk about this whole economic downturn thing, explaining how they have not enumerated at all how it's going to be a big issue. And they tried to use this example of COVID as showing like, well, look at what happened there with that economic downturn. Number one, that has nothing to do with hacking at all. Um, and moreover, it did not lead to an economic collapse, right? They actually dug themselves into a bigger hole with this example because a global plague did not cause an economic collapse. Um, and so now they have to actually show how not only if, if a global pandemic is not going to cause the collapse of the U.S. economy, how these cyber attacks are going to cause that, right? Like, you should be very, very skeptical and very suspicious of exactly their economic collapse arguments at this point in time um, based on the things that they have said in this round, all right? So next, they're trying to talk about our whole China thing and how like they're saying like, oh, we solve for self, we solve for stuff outside of our advantages. That's not how debate works at all. You have to stick to your advantages, otherwise you could just make some generic thing like our plan is to give people money when they do good stuff, and then you can say that you solve for everything, right? They had not talked about this China thing at all until we brought it up, and even if we do give them a hundred percent of the possibility that yeah, maybe they can fix for the whole China stuff. Number one, they have not explain how they can both split their um, focus between Russia and China, and that would be an effective thing, and B, um, they have not explained at all as to how um, that's going to prevent from cyber attacks, right? We go back to my whole explanation as to how the entire concept of hacking has to do with exploiting ways that you're not ready for. If you uh, like make it the analogy of breaking into a house, if you lock the front door, if you got a back door, guess what? They're going in through there. You lock the back door too. Did you leave a window unlocked? Guess what? I got a heavy rock. Bam! I'm going through your window, right? Like, you, like as many ways as you can prepare, there's another way that someone can break into your house, right? Um, if they really, really wanted to, right? And these hackers really, really want to do that. So guess what? They're going to figure out a way. And the best that you can possibly do is prepare for ways that you are already familiar with your stuff being broken into. But there are always ways that that has not happened yet, all right? And there's no way that they can prevent for these things. Next, they tried to say that um, I'm trying to use our, use our own two lane 22 card against us by saying that uh, that means that cyber attacks are important. That's not actually what the card is saying. It's saying that, yeah, they did happen. And what that meant and what that caused was a change in the status quo that now they're actually going to be preventing from cyber attacks already in the status quo without the need for this um, cooperation with NATO. All right. So these things do, are not needed. It's already being worked on. It's not going to fix the problem, and it's going to cause unforeseen consequences in the form of the Russia disadvantage and the China disadvantage. Let's go on to those right now. Next, uh, uh, so the Russia decide again, doing nothing is the better option here, right? That's how 
unfleshed out this plan is. Number one, the plan does not solve because you cannot properly prepare for cyber attacks. Not only does my personal analogy explain this, but our loan again in Molo 22 card says this. NATO is specifically not a good actor for working with cybersecurity, and Article 5 is specifically a bad way to respond to cyber threats. Not only next, not only do they not solve, they make things worse. Russia is a very unstable actor, and they are not afraid to escalate conflict if they feel threatened, if they feel is in their best interest. Ukraine is actually a perfect example of this. They straight up invaded another country for a myriad of reasons, and this is a unique level of inter-country conflict we have not seen in decades. But Russia doesn't care, and we should not mess with someone like that. All right, next. China, right? Again, I've already sort of touched on this, but A, they have not explained how they can both focus on Russia and China and all these other things and make them all work together, right? They say like, oh, we could do that, but no explanation to how they would do that and what it would look like and if it would work. We, they can't just say, we could do it and we just uh, believe them, right? They have to show us exactly how that would work. They have not explained that. Um, but what, what we have explained is that China is slowly growing and that uh, Chinese um, hacks have doubled in the last year. And if we do not focus on that, then they will eventually grow to the point where they can hit us in a way that we're not ready for and then that will bring us down way more than any threats that they claim done oh yeah hang on let me mute myself real quick
Okay. So we're gonna go case. Oh, never mind, never mind. Okay. Wait, wait. I was gonna go wrong one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're gonna go case, China, Russia. Can okay, everybody hear me? Fine on my okay. Click it. It's like so so. Not so so. Do I have to do the, the other computer thing again? Okay. Can you guys hear me fine? Hear me dandy? And I'm muted on this computer, no echoes. Nope. Okay, cool. I'm gonna start, okay. At the end of today's debate, you need to vote affirmative. The 1AC is the first step to create long lasting change to the cybersecurity specter. At the end of today's debate, we're the only plan that offers you a concrete solution to get uh, a concrete solution to solve for the impact of today's debate. Onto the line by onto the line by line argument. Um, they said that trying to solve is the whole focus. They said the negative trying to say us trying to solve the whole focus is bad and we, and we need to be in the um and we need to do the status quo because that causes less um that causes less damage. Um not true. Number one, um on on the on the impact flow, nobody's done it, nobody's done any kind of um nobody's done any kind of calculus or nobody's done any kind of calculus or reason for uh, why the impact should win. Number two, the app is the only one that is giving you a, um, has, has continued to give you a reason why our impacts will, will still happen at the end of today's debate. Two, um, if, we, if we continue to do the status quo, that leads to low cybersecurity, low cybersecurity um, leads to cybersecurity hacks, cybersecurity hacks leads to people dying and people dying leads to Russia getting cocky because we're not doing anything. And that leads to a war with Russia. Um, and in number two, even if you don't buy that, even if you don't buy that by the end of the debate, we both agree on both sides that war will happen inevitably at some point. However, what the affirmative does is that we have a plan that runs the risk of solving. If you agree that the 1AC can save one life, then you still vote affirmative to move away from the status quo. The affirmative, the affirmative has done its job and burden enough to agree that we move away from the status quo and can at least save one life. So it's doing nothing versus the risk of getting something done. Um, they said um, we give no explanation for how the economy will fall. We actually did because we turned their ball. We turned their ballers eighteen card. Um, number one, their their card talks about how companies will um, will lose this much money, and they're saying that we haven't seen it. Um, we haven't um, companies take different impacts to that risk. However, that doesn't that doesn't necessarily talk about how. Um, and they also you could group that argument with the COVID argument, saying that a global um, that the global pandemic didn't collapse the economy, but it actually did. If you look at if you look at California right now, our rent is high as hell. People cannot afford to live in California because we are in a global, we are, we are uh, unstable right now, meaning that we're at a tipping point, meaning that if we don't do the 1AC, people will not be able to find jobs. People will not be able to live. When people don't have jobs and don't have uh, ways to live, that means they stop buying things. Them um, stopping buying things leads to an, a, an economy downfall. Um, they said, um, um, focus on, uh, they said there's a split focus on Russia and China, and they made that argument on the China DA and, and on case. So I'm going to answer them both here. Um, it's not a split focus. The plan, uh, plan proposing an increase on, on defense of cybersecurity overall is not a split focus on a specific country. Um, they said um, they're already increasing. Number two, we turned this card because in, in all of their uh, in all of their warrants and their cards, there is no specific example for how it has been increased. And the 2020 election proves that um, the number one, their cards were 2018. Um, and in number two, 2020 election proves that there has been no substantial increase in cybersecurity from when they made that promise, meaning that we still have room in cybersecurity where they can build. On to, uh, um, I already answered their only argument on um, China was that their Russia and China split and China could take over. Russia that on the case flow. Um, on, to, on to Russia, they said we, um, on to Russia. 
Um, number two, they said that we're poking a sleeping bear and doing nothing um, and doing nothing is better than doing something. However, the, um, we're not poking a bear if the bear is attacking us. We have to we have to do the affirmative to run the risk of solving for anything. If we agree that there is going to be a war no matter what, it's better to do something and run the risk of solving than to do nothing. Um, and then two, they said that uh, Russia will hack in different ways and we can't stop this. And they use an example of a house. Well, using that same example, if somebody is coming in through the back door, you can lock that and then learn to lock the windows. And then learn to build uh, more structurally concrete walls. There's no reason as for why we cannot build better defenses. We we don't claim to solve for all cybersecurity in every in every aspect, but we do believe that we run the risk of creating better cybersecurity, making it harder for them to get into, uh, making them harder to get into those networks and hurting those people, uh, making it harder for them to do it which means that um, that decreases the likelihood that they'll do it because it will become too hard for them to do it over time. And if that's the case, if we continue to, um, if everybody just gets better and let's say, oh, they go to the back door, they go to the window. We know next time that at least they can't go to the window anymore. It's not that easy because if we just leave the window open, that means that there is a guarantee for war. We can't, um, if there's a guarantee in the status quo, run the risk of do doing the 1AC and vote out. Good debate. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> As um, Gay was just humorously and comedically just trying to show you all is that you should shake hands after the end of the debate um, and just give everyone a round of applause. Um, so you should definitely do that. Um, when you are debating, you should definitely shake your, your hand and also shake the judge's hand. Yes, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this right now. Shake your hand, the judge's hand. Well, you shake your, no, I'm sorry. Shake your opponent's hand, not shake your own hand. Shake your, shake your, shake your hand, shake your opponent's hands um, and shake the judge's hand. And, you know, and then um, the other thing too is after each debate, keep your flows, um, make sure that you um, write down, you know, what the judge um, wants to say about the debate and um, write down some of the things that you thought about the debate and keep those flows later for you to be able to do better um, later to be able to practice during speaking redos and speech redos and being able to, you know, take what you learned from the debate and doing it better the next time. Um, the other thing here is too is um, we have two different types of arguments. The affirmative has had their plan, which is to work with the United States and NATO to increase security operations um, that would um, better their defenses when it comes to cyber attacks. And also you have the negative, which is saying that doing the plan would make problems worse as it relates to China. And um, it would also hurt, you know, um, other, uh, not as it relates to just China, but as also as it relates to Russia, and also that you know the plan has issues in terms it's not able to resolve. And so, based on those two sides, do you think the AF is able to avoid the disadvantages that was made by the negative, or do you think that the disadvantages still stand? And do you think that the AF doesn't do enough to resolve the disadvantages and resolve its own merits? So, based on what you think you want to do. You can choose to either vote AF or you can choose to either vote NEG. But like I said, there is a sample ballot that will be listed below in this video link and um, you should have it with your classroom as well. Uh, I hope that you were able to flow and take note of the arguments in each column of each individual speech. Um, and you can stop and pause at any moment, rewind and see if you missed any of the arguments that were there. Um, and also too, when you're writing your reason for a decision in that ballot, please do not tell us Najara sounds pretty, Gabe, he looks cute today. Um, Mathino was, you know, more loud. I don't know whatever you're going to write, but those are not the things that we're looking for. What we're looking for in your reason for decision is we didn't want to know what argument persuaded you the most. What was the the thesis or the concept or idea that persuaded you to vote either affirmative or voting negative. So now that you've watched the debate, think about it, look over your notes, consider what's important to you in this debate, consider who made things important to you in this debate. And um, 
thanks for watching us. And um, we're going to have a lot more opportunities um, to um, be involved this year. So definitely check us out on Thursdays. We'll be having our practices for the whole league. Come into the office. We'll have volunteers that will help with some of those practices on Fridays. Our first tournament will be at Jack Howell. Wish us well if you don't see us by that time, um, but wish us well going to that tournament. And we'll have other tournaments that will be um, coming here locally and that we'll be traveling to. So definitely, definitely, definitely try to use this as a, a template for practice. Um, but yeah, thanks again for watching. And hopefully this was um, educational and that you learned something today. And again, if you have any questions about what you watched or witnessed, you have me that you can ask questions. And um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks um, again to Najar, Sophie, and Gabe for helping with this debate. And um, they'll be around helping us throughout the rest of the season. So talk to you later.